This ain't your family. <laughs> Black. We all family. What's good, cousin? Welcome to the Black of the Movies podcast, episode one. I am your host, Ashanti, or your fairy squad mother, if you nasty. And today, we are talking about the absolute Christmas classic, Last Holiday from 2006, featuring the one and only Queen Latifah. And today, we're here with... Oh, hold on one second. Nice. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. This is not DSG. Hello, hello. Not DSG, aka DSG, aka Cinema by Devon, aka if you know me IRL, then you already know. Too many AKAs. Exactly. <laughs> You're also my fiance. I am your fiance. Lucky you. And you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me, when was the first time you saw this movie last holiday? Was it a staple in your childhood? Actually, I don't remember. Okay, I've seen a lot of Queen Latifah movies when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But this one in particular, I think you might have shown me. Really? Yes. That's absolutely bonkers. There's like a possibility that I did see it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But there were so many, so I don't remember. Interesting. And you know what's funny about this one? It has both of our OG celebrity crushes, Queen Latifah and Giancarlo Esposito. <laughs> now you gotta guess who has a crush on who. <laughs> <laughs> it's both. <laughs> it's both. So for the listeners, if you're just tuning in, like we're on a radio. Oh. If you're just tuning in, we are going to be talking about last holiday from 2006 um if you have not seen this spoilers i am going to delve into everything with not dsg today so and if you haven't seen it it's been out since 2006 where have you been dog okay okay bring it down all right, all right. Let, me, <laughs> let me get comfy Last Holiday centers Georgia Bird, who is a sales clerk in New Orleans. And she is very demure, very quiet, shy, keeps to herself. And she one day finds out that she has a rare disease and that she only has three to four weeks to live. And so instead of sulking around like she was planning on doing she decides to liquidate all of her assets get all of her money out of the bank quit her job in a blaze of glory and go to this really fancy ass hotel that she's always been wanting to go to to eat food cooked by her favorite chef chef dda and in the midst of all of this she lets loose she explores herself as a person she gets real petty meets some funny and interesting people and gets the love of her life and i love this film me too and i was so excited when you showed me honestly the first time i saw this i think was like again with tv1 i think it was on tv1 either it was tv1 or bt and i was like ooh. I'm going to need that immediately. Let me grab my notes. I was like, ooh, I'm going to need that immediately. Little me saw this movie for the first time. It was just like, that's it. That's my whole personality. That's the life I want to live. <laughs> this, is, this is my comfort item, my comfort movie. I will never get tired of this film. Me neither. For obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. So let's let's get into it. All right, all right. Let's get into it. So, firstly, I want to know what one of your favorite scenes was. Because there's a lot of good scenes in this. This is an old school rom-com, almost coming of age, finding yourself kind of thing. So, I want to know what scene, one of the scenes that called out to you. Um, One of the scenes, should I go in order or just random? Just random, whatever you want. I'll choose a random one because I told you one previously um when she appears in the restaurant for the first time after getting her all of her clothes to make her look like a rich woman Mm -hmm. that red dress brother that red dress she said make me international international (laughs) not only that uh in conjunction with that scene her ordering the entire menu as is Mm -hmm. which is 
I feel like it's a chef's wet dream. Honestly, she sat there and at, and 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 she sits at the she sits at the table, and the waiter comes over and asks her what she wants after he reads off all of the specials, and she says, "Ah, oh, will he have the same specials tomorrow?" And the guy says, "No, Chef DDA never creates the same menu twice. Never." And she said, "Guess I'll just have to try them all." <laughs> Such a badass moment. Such like a thing I'm sure everyone wants to do. I'm like, let's just order everything. Let's see how all of this tastes. No, and for just real. Go wild. Oh, if only. Yeah, uh, you, you think you think George's character actually eats all of that, or do you think she's just tasting? I think she's tasting mm. most of it and picking and choosing to get her fill with the rest. Because we actually never know how big the menu is because mm-hmm. it changes every night. Mm-hmm. So I think she gets her fill from a small bite of everything. She definitely got like six to six to eight dishes that night alone. A lot of sides, a lot of proteins, a lot of really specialty dinners. Rich. Rich. Okay, one of my favorite scenes um, is the plane scene where she's flying to... Carlo oh. Vivari, and I take it that this is her first time crossing the pond on a flight, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she is in the peasant seats, as we all know. We're very familiar with it. Uh, she's in the peasant seats, and this dude in front of her is trying to lean back into her, which is like, they should not allow that at this all. Big body dude, by the way. He's... Big body dude, which she refers to him as a big boy. <laughs> yeah. She refers to him as a big boy. And she's like, I'm not flying all the way to uh, Prague with a stranger in my lap. And the attendant dude is just like, well, if you had chosen to fly first class. And she's like, how much is it? And she changes, she upgrades to first class mid-flight, mid-air. Do you know how many times I have thought about that and wanted to do that? Not only that, like right before she asked, she finished her drinks and she's like, how much for the damn seat? Yeah, the whole plane is on her side. The whole, the whole plane, plane is on is her is side, knowing full well, none of them are moving. <laughs> None of them are moving. <laughs> Just her. Why are you clapping? <laughs> you should be envious. That should be me. Exactly. <laughs> like, ah, uh, and I'm envious. I thought about that on various flights that I've taken this year, and I want that so bad. Which, What's another one of your favorite scenes? Another one of my favorite scenes, and I'm sure everyone has a moment like this where they feel like they can do it, but they definitely can't. Mm. Is where she goes into her boss's office, Mm -hmm. tries to confide in him about what's going on. Mm -hmm. He dismisses her, ignores her, and is so rude that she breaks his cell phone. With her her, shoe. With her heel. (laughs) Takes the damn phone, places it down, grabs her heel, and just smash it. Break it, bend it, and throw it at the wall. Listen, that dude had it fucking coming, okay? A Damien? Oh! That also, actor played a good villain. <laughs> why is his name a Damien? Uh, it's just singular. A singular Damien. Singular white man named Damien. I've never met a white man named Damien. Me neither. I met a white man named Gentry one time. That was crazy. We'll get into that later. <laughs> It was crazy. We were sitting at a restaurant in like downtown LA. Mm. It's like Saturday night. It's 8 p.m. And I'm eating lobster mac and cheese with like truffle and shit. Mm -hmm. And I asked the waiter his name so I know. And he says Gentry. And both me and my cousin were astonished. Does he know he could just make up any name, right? (laughs) What? like if your name is that's a very like one in a million type of name mm-hmm. Gentry. Mm-hmm. But why? i don't know i mean 
I mean, no shame on the name, but like. That's like meeting a white man named Des- Deshaun. That's exactly what it is, because you never met one in your life. <laughs> back to back to a Damien. Okay, okay. Um, he's a dick. Probably Huge. one of the worst employers I've seen in a movie, and <laughs> the things that he says, he's just constantly belittling and demeaning Georgia. And honestly, he had that shit coming. Especially after she learned that her section alone was the highest earning mm-hmm. in like all the stores and all of the. And all you, areas. you know what's crazy about that scene is the fact that after, because you know how you just said that her section is the highest earning in that store. Mm-hmm. Um, he. He assumed that instead of like checking on her after she had hit her head at work and gotten a whole CAT scan, instead of wanting to console or asking how she's doing, he automatically goes to and assumes that she would be just as bad as him and that she came in with intentions of holding him up for more money. That's crazy. Well, no, what's crazy is the amount he tries to offer. 10 cents more. 15 cents more. A, a quarter more. Quarter. <laughs> and then as she continues to walk out over the, over the intercom, Miss Bird, a dollar more. <laughs> like, no. Like, that's like throwing dirt in my face and apologizing by throwing sand in my face mm-hmm. and then apologizing again. And throwing something else in my face that I don't want. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, you got to think about the turmoil that she's going through in her mind. After finding out you only have three to four weeks to live. And then you have to deal with that bullshit. That's crazy. But honestly, you're right. That is a good scene. I should have chose that one as one of my favorites. Retribution. Okay? Mm-hmm. She went out guns a-blazing. And I love that for her. I have another favorite scene. I have, well, all of them are my favorite scenes. I mean, let's be because <laughs> because I love that film. Um, another one of my favorite scenes was the snowboarding scene. First of all, you don't really get to see a lot of black people snowboard. <laughs> That's like not a thing. True, unless it was a Disney Channel movie. Okay, well, minus that, you don't get to really see it. Okay, we're not going to talk about Johnny Tsunami today. (laughs) But (laughs) you don't get to see a lot of black people ski, which is super cool and super important. And she just decided that she wanted to do it while she was there. Because at this point, it's like a bucket list, you know? Right. She's about to be uh, on her way out. Going up yonder, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny that she tried it out first. But then as she continues to try it out, She goes way beyond the practice area and screams the entire time. (laughs) And hijinks ensue. And the fact that she passes up Cragen, the person who owns the stores that she works in, unbeknownst to him, of course. Mm -hmm. She passes him up. He immediately gets competitive because they always see a black woman shining and want to Humble her, and I'm sick of it. Well, thankfully, in this uh, in the scene you're talking about, the exact opposite happens. Oh yeah, he gets humbled real quick on the black diamond. It's a black diamond run, which is not in the practice area, which is also the hardest uh, area of a mountain to ski. So I've heard, and will never experience. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> And it's so funny when they're going down because he face plants. And he says, nobody makes me do a face plant, damn it. And she goes back, watch your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) The original Captain America, okay? (laughs) The original. Where's her shield? Right. So good. (laughs) So good. So hilarious. And even going through all of that, 
and passing through trees and having to jump over fences and literally hightailing it off of the side of a cliff just to land on a table, have her picture taken and put on the front of a snowboard mis- snowboard magazine. That's Which nuts. First day of snowboarding and you're already on a magazine. And top, you're already top, on a magazine. Top tier. Top tier. What's another one of your favorite scenes? All right. Another one of my favorite scenes is, it's sad, but it's funny. It's mm-hmm. when she's in church. Okay. And she's asking, she's asking the Lord, why me? Oh, dear Lord, why me? Why me, Lord? <laughs> and then the choir just goes bananas, as choirs do. Mm-hmm. Baptist just, church, they're going to chime and in. And they think she got the Holy Spirit. And they're just... Why? Everyone is getting their life, okay? They're Every turnt. single person. They're lit. From the pastor to the choir to all the attendees. As she's going through turmoil, asking why, Lord. Because she just found out. This is right after she found out she had the brain tumor and all that. Or mm-hmm. the rare disease. She's going through it. Everybody thinks she caught the Holy Ghost. They're like, <laughs> Why? <laughs> People running up and down the aisles, catching the Holy Ghost. And people, like, touching her, like, thinking they're going to get the spirit, too. It's like, oh, man, it's so sad, but it's so, like, funny. It makes you think, like, I I went to, I grew up in the church, right? Mm -hmm. And it makes you think, like, when these things happen in real life, because I've seen very similar situations, like, unfold in real life where someone's, like, really really going through it and maybe they haven't told anybody and it comes out while they're at church it's just like dang do your church members even give a fuck about you because i didn't see any scene of anybody uh reaching out to her or checking in on her and honestly mary that says a lot true but also i don't think she told anyone at the church no not like it matters True, but she was gone for weeks and they didn't even bother to call. Exactly. And notice how you don't see any of them in that final scene at the restaurant when all the people from her life are pulling up. Oh, you're so right. You don't see any of them. You're so right. Let's get into it because... <laughs> Come on. Come on. The number one thing that my grandfather would do, because he was the pastor of my church, the number one thing that he would do is if somebody in his church, one of his members was going through something, was in the hospital, he was going to be there. He was checking in. He was calling. He was popping up at your house if you haven't showed up in two weeks. Oh, yeah, baby. That's how you're supposed to do it. But I do love that scene. It's a great scene. It's bitter. It's a bittersweet scene. It is. It's funny as fuck, but it's also very sad. And honestly, that's the trauma. <laughs> that's the trauma, baby. So, so true. I have one more scene that I think is really, really good. But I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. Once Chef DDA finds out that his new favorite customer and just favorite person in general has this rare disease and is due to die which at this point i'm thinking like in like a week or something Mm -hmm. right after they have this really touching exchange it goes straight into a cooking montage and i love it if there's anything that i love to watch it's just food stuff happening i just want to watch them cook i'll i'll watch people cook for hours I've seen you do it. <laughs> You've seen me do it. You've watched it with me. Oh, yeah. And there's something about movie food and anime food that just hits the spot for me. I don't even have to eat anymore. That's my way of ingesting. It's just watching it. <laughs> True, because at the end of that montage, you get to see the spread that they did. Yo, that spread was wild. Everything looks like it's cooked to perfection. There's like whole ass pheasants on a tray. 
whole ass pheasants. There's bouillabaisse with crab and lobster. Oh, so good. I'm hungry right now. Just thinking about it. I'm so empty. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, baby. We're gonna go uh, get food after this. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. So we've talked about our favorite scenes, and honestly, you and I can talk about it all day. Mm-hmm. Let's move into the trivia, because I've got some questions for you, and I want to see if you know the answers. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first question is a true or false? Mm-hmm. The Grand Hotel Pup is a real hotel. True or false? I'll be honest, I don't even remember where the country is, so I'm going to say false. It's actually true. <laughs> For real? I, I'm, I'm not even shitting you. The Grand Hotel Poop is a real hotel. Carlo Vivari is a real place. No. In fact, the Grand Hotel Poop was also featured in a James Bond film. Which one? Uh, I don't know. It's one of the more recent ones. The ones with that dude named Daniel, I guess. Oh, I haven't seen those. Oh, me either. <laughs> but it's real. It's like $126 a night. <laughs> no, you want to go? I'm down, clown. Pack your bags. <laughs> We're going. All right, next question. Which famous sisters make an inkling of an appearance in the film? I feel like you know this. Um, can I have a hint? No. <laughs> um, I, I believe I do know this. Oh, well, here's a hint. They're black. <laughs> is, that, is that a good enough hint for you? No, because when you say they're sisters and they're black, my mind goes to T and Tamara, but they're, I know they're not in there. Oh my god. <laughs> my final guess is Chloe and Halle Bailey. Yes! It's so interesting because you don't really get to see them or their face all that much, but they are playing two of Queen Latifah's uh, sister's kids in the film. Nice. It's so random, huh? It's very random. I think that was actually their first time breaking into acting. They were kids. They were like five. Oh, really? Yeah, they were young. Jeez. They started out young. You know, in all these films, you never know who really be in these films. No, for real. Even as like kids, like honestly, I only learned that out uh, recently. When we watch the movie again, like recently, because it's Christmas time, mm-hmm. and I like randomly discovered that I almost forgot. I know. It's like where? I know. It's crazy. All right, last question: Which major network played a huge role behind the scenes? Oh, I know this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's plastered everywhere. Say it loud and proud. in the beginning. Y'all. <clears throat> the Food Network. Yes, indeedy. For those who don't know, Food Network played a huge part in this film. Not only was Emeril Lagasse in the film, both uh, his show and also him making an actual appearance at George's Restaurant at the end of the film. Mm-hmm. Food Network chefs were actually behind the scenes preparing all of that food. All of it was real? Yes! Oh my goodness. The food was real! All of it was real. They even taught Queen Latifah some tips and tricks so she can look like a real chef on the scene. I love that so much. Right? It's like um, it's like John Favreau and Roy Choi. Uh, another pair of my favorite duos. Mm-hmm. And from another uh, bop of a movie, I tell you what. Mm-hmm. Final thoughts on this film. Georgia Bird created Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone needs to pay her her money. Because a little scrapbook that she made, the little possibilities book. That's, Girl, that's Pinterest. Pinterest. 
Yeah. Possibilities of cooking recipes, doing arts and crafts. She did a vision board. A vision board. Yeah. But molten, like even better than a visual board. Because she had it sectioned off by different things. Mm-hmm. Who she wanted to get married to, where she wanted to stay, what she wanted to cook. Speaking of who she wanted to get married to, I have <laughs> I have a gripe. I have a final grievance, okay? I got some things to say. This is specifically for um, Sean, the character, played by LL Cool J. Stop licking your lips. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Ugh. This is the second movie where I've had to endure LL Cool J licking his lips. I'm sorry. He just doesn't do it for me. He just when, doesn't do it for me, sister. When we were uh, watching Last Holiday together, I nicknamed him Mr. Licks His Lips a lot. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And I know there are a lot of people that thought it was sexy. I gotta ask my mom if she thinks it's sexy. I don't know. But he also made a very, very small appearance in the movie Baps. And there... <laughs> and uh, Nisi was like, you keep licking them lips! <laughs> And I know you with your baby's mama, but if the shit don't work out, you <laughs> We're gonna talk about that movie on this one. I promise. I promise. Oh my god. <laughs> but that is my final grievance. It... <laughs> Please don't die. I need you. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> any final thoughts my love final thoughts on the movie mm-hmm. i love that movie so much i love queen latifah i love jean carlo espinito mm-hmm. but more importantly i love queen latifah <laughs> we know yeah <laughs> I-, I love queen latifah in case you didn't get the memo mm-hmm I'm talking to you. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. She don't play for your team, playboy. Sorry. Uh, I knew that. I know that. Mm-hmm. I still love her, though. I know. I still love Giancarlo Esposito, but he's too old for me. This is why we're together. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tell the people where they can find you uh, if you would like to share that information. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Cinema by Devon. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube at not DSG and at not cinema by Devon. Not just follow not DSG on YouTube. <laughs> that one's better. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you. Of course. It's a and pleasure. I love you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, baby. Ooh. Ooh kiss on camera. Ew, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting uh thank you if you've made it this far thank you for listening to our first episode of the black of the movies podcast ooh, ooh. this was queerly founded by yours truly and we hope to do a lot of big things a lot of big things a lot of episodes cover all of our favorite movies and if you have suggestions please let us know give well us, give us all the black movies mm-hmm. well you ain't gotta go home. <laughs> but you, can't but you gotta get the hell out of here. Hey, Bye. Let's go now.